Hello and welcome to my channel again. Today we're doing the blue poppy. As I said before, we're going to use the same shape petals and produce a different poppy. This is the face on look of the poppy like we did before. This poppy is going to be facing upwards. So there's going to be some petals behind and one petal in front, still using the same shapes, but it's just how we position them. This poppy is going to be facing downwards. Same idea. This video is a little faster. It's one and a half times faster. So you won't be able to paint as quick as this, but the video is going to be too long if I hadn't done that. The paint color I'm using here is turquoise and it's by Grumbaka. And I mix it with a tiny bit of green earth, also by Grumbaka. And then we use some Payne's Gray as well. So that's the Payne's Gray. We're just putting in the edges the center of the poppy and wherever it touches the blue it's going to seep into the blue and move because the paint the blue paint is still wet now I'm going to put a dark center into the poppy and it's a circle and it's got little lines that go around from the center of the circle where the seeds form. Of course, remember, we're just doing a loose poppy here. We're not trying to get the absolute identical painting as a real poppy. It would take a lot longer, and one of these days I will show you how that's done. But this is for beginners who want to have something that looks really pretty. It looks like a poppy, and it's fun to do. So here we put in the stems using the earth green, and there's a nice consistency on my brush so that I can get nice... Uh, fluid lines and I'm going to add a little bit more of that turquoise to add a little bit more uh, to the petals especially down at the bottom there it helps it look like the poppy is attached to the stem So as you can see, we really already got quite a pretty looking uh, poppy here. We need to fill in a little bit of the details. So here I'm mixing a little bit of the turquoise with the earth green and making a slightly darker green. And I'm going to paint along the right edge of each stem uh, just to give it a little bit more depth. So the light is coming from the left hand side. I haven't got a tripod that comes from behind me and over top of me yet, so this is the best way I can record this for the moment. If anybody knows uh, what a really good tripod um, that extends out above your head and over the top, I'd really appreciate it if you'd let me know where you got it. That'd be great. Just touching up the edges of the poppy where it hit the green. It got kind of lost a little bit there. Now I'm taking my very tiny brush, uh, Zero, I think it is. It's, it's actually broken at the top, um, but it's one of my favorite brushes, so I've just kept it. 
and I'm painting the tiny little hairs that you see on the stem. You probably can't see them unless I got closer, but um, all poppies have these tiny little hairs along the stem. So just adding a little bit more definition to the petal here, adding a little bit more of the turquoise. You have to do this when the poppy is dry though, because otherwise it's going to get blotchy. Now I'm not using um, cotton paper here, this is my scrapbook, so if you were using cotton paper it would be a lot easier. So I'm putting a little bit of paint here at the bottom and then at the top of that petal I'm going to add just water and let it seep down and let the paint and the water blend together. That way you get a nice smooth uh, blend. So I'm just putting a little bit more of the uh, Payne's Grey here and it will seep into the blue because the blue is still wet. It gives it a little bit more definition. And I pick up my book to let it run a little bit. And if you get too much running out of place like that, you can clean your brush, dry it, and then uh, you can soak up the water because the brush is thirsty. So I'm just drawing the paint out and creating the filament and then the little dots at the top are the anther where the pollen grows. So we'll be creating that in a moment. Of course, in a real poppy, um, the filament is often sort of a limey yellow color, and the anther is an orange. But to make it loose and stylish, I've chosen to use the paints gray only for simplicity. So here I'm putting in the anthers, the little tiny pollen spots. And as an artist, you can do whatever you want with a flower, so just be creative. Of course, if you're painting a light uh, yellow and green, you'd want to use, uh, you, you could use gouache white and paint these and then add a little bit of gouache yellow and white for the anthers 
if you so choose. I'm just putting in a few little veins to give even more depth to the petals. Of course the poppy petal is quite thin and almost uh, transparent. So you can see the veins quite well on some of them. You don't have to be very accurate here. You just have to put in a few lines and try and follow the shape of the petal. So if it's curving, you would uh, make the vein line curve as well. Adding a little bit more darkness to the bottom of the flower here again. So the purpose of lifting your book um, is to let the paint run and it blends much better that way. If you play too much with your brush, it's going to get blotchy and you don't want that. So we're coming to the end of this painting and uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you give it a go. And of course you don't have to use blue, you can use any color you want. And I hope that you can uh, share this with your friends. Enjoy it while you're doing it. Just finally touching up a few edges. And then all I have to do is sign it. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And look out for the next video. We're going to be using the same shape petal, but we're going to produce a completely different flower. So I look forward to sharing that with you. Bye for now.